Okay, I haven't done one in a while, but um, I'm going to build, I'm going to go through the torsional exercise. Um, the beautiful thing is it's popping up my windows on the other screen, so i got to drag them over. I'm starting with Inventor because it's what's on my computer. So I'm going to start with, and this is honestly the biggest decision I think that I've got to make. Um, I'm going to go on the XY plane. That's not the decision. New sketch. Circle. I always tie mine down to something. I hope you guys are starting to think about that. Um, this is it right here. This is it right here. And there are some reasons for choosing this one way and reasons for choosing this another way. Um, well, actually, no, there's not. I'm going to set the diameter to two inches. And I know you can't see that. I can't see that either. But it went to two inches. We can see that. Maybe you can, it's kind of small even on the screen. I'm setting it to two inches because now my radius is one, and so when I have to calculate J, it's one to the fourth. I can do that. I, honestly, I can do two to the fourth, but that's that's it. The other thing is, uh, and I'll show you. I'll show you later. But this is about planning ahead, and you're gonna. It's gonna go all the way to the end, and you're gonna. Wow, how do you think of that so early? Well, you know, it's experience some of it, but all right, I extrude it. How big do I have to make this? Well, I want to. We've already learned I need to get away from the end effects, and so I want to go uh, as far away from the end. So I, I think realistically, aspect ratio around ten. Sure. Um, now, if you want to do this whole thing in metric, same kind of thing applies. You can use same numbers. Oh, ten important for other reasons too. We'll get to that. There are other good choices for that, but ten's a good one. There's my model. Uh, stress analysis. Create a study. Somebody got stumped on this last week. You got to create a new static stress analysis, otherwise it won't let you do anything. I have to assign a material. Now, if I want to validate my numbers, um, if I want to validate my numbers, I'm gonna have to look at this. Uh, 6061 welded. No, that's been heat treated. This is, they had 6061 AHC. I have no idea what that means. I'm assuming that means after heat treat. Um, I am going to look at these a second though, because these are, because there's a whole experiment on, uh, there's a whole lab on doing this and picking these right. 6061 after heat treat. Can I look at my material properties? Yeah, here, they're coming up here. And I want to look at my physical properties and my mechanical strength. So I've got about 10E6. That's good. See, I bet this is in metric, stored in metric, converted to English, and then we get some round off error. But in English, it's often 10, 10E6. So that's, that's a good number. I want to look at um, 6061. Now, this, is a, this should be a different material. This... Physical property, they've got the same Young's modulus. Is it the same material? No, it's a different material. Or it's got a different name. What are they doing after AHC, after heat treat? After heat, I don't know what they're doing. At AHC. Same, same Young's modulus. Um, I think if we started looking at strengths, we'll see some differences. This is 40,000. Um, that's for AHC after heat. 6061 physical strength. Still 40,000. I don't know. I don't know why they have different materials. If you were in um, SolidWorks, you need to pay attention to this. You need to pay attention to that. So I'm picking aluminum 6061. We know that it's got a Young's modulus of roughly 10,000 um, units KSI, 10,000 KSI. There'll be a little round off there, but it's in the fourth decimal place. I'm, I'm good with that. We, we'll have other issues. So, um, okay, I got my material. I want to fix one end. Um, let's fix the origin end, which is that one, I think apply and then cancel and then I'm going to apply a force 
and I'm going to apply there's a, that and I um, see it's not if you look it's not allowing me to do a torque I can do a force in the XYZ I can't do oh here look, look I got a moment sorry I just didn't look hard enough location there and it looks like that and now I can put on a force of pick pick force um inch pounds so it's gonna be small so I'm going with 10 I'm just gonna go with a thousand I was gonna go with 10,000 I'm just going with a thousand apply do I need anything else no go ahead punch it up see what happens run fixed on one end forces on the other the result should be good somewhere in the middle von Mises stress von Mises stress I ought to um, I ought to pause the video, pull up my whiteboard, see if I can write down equations and do some of these calculations in a sec. See if I can do that. Hold on. All right, it was that my uh, working space was over here, and that's why I was looking right at the camera, but now my working space is over here, so, yeah. oh well. Equations I got to deal with. T, uh, the shear stress is equal to T, C over J. All right. Now, I said I picked numbers so that they made sense for me um t the torque i added was a thousand inch pounds c was one inch that makes that easy j is equal to pi r to the fourth over two that i can almost do in my head what my shear stress is um but i can't do it in my head because i haven't had my coffee yet so um we're going to calculate that hold on Stresses, 636 PSI. That's what I calculate. All right, we good with that? 636 PSI. It's basically 2,000 divided by pi. I could have probably done it in my head. But I, like I said, no coffee, no, no, no chance. So let's go back to, um, <coughs> let's go back to FEA, <coughs> back to the camera. There's my FEA. Now I'm looking at von Mises' stress, and I'm trying to compare to a shear stress of 637 PSI and this is telling me I've got a von Mises stress of 1.12 well if we go back and we think about yep our shear stress and our normal stress our shear is half the normal stress that was maximum angle or sorry maximum uh, normal stress kind of theory where that came from if we start looking at that you say well if I doubled it 600 doubled, I get 1,200. I'm in the neighborhood of 1,100. Yeah, that's okay. And, and von Mises is not shear stress. I got to go back and look up shear stress. Now, this is where this problem gets challenging. What shear stress am I looking for? Am I looking for, um, if I'm looking for the stress, let's say I'm looking for the shear stress at this point or at those points. Oh, I'm trying to move those so I can see. There we go. There's one. There's a, a pretty good von Mises stress. Well, actually, this whole outside surface is about that 1.1 value. What is the shear stress going to be there? Well, I'm going to say, look, it's it's probably not in the z-axis. It's in the x or the y. So I look at my stress x, y, and I got nothing. Well, actually, that's because it's a free surface. This is a ch this is challenging to figure out. If I go look at the stress in the x, z, here's where it shows up. Here's where it shows up. And in fact, my number, you're going to go, hey, what did I calculate? 637. Boom. Okay, that's not so good. 637. Even this, 615, that's um, 20 parts off out of 600. Um, that's 3%. I'm, I'm good with that. Now, what's going on on the other side? Let me spin this baby around. This side is all blue. It's got, ne well, it's negative 637. Why? Because the shear stress goes in the other direction. I can slap a probe label. Oh, should have put a, should have just kept picking. Probe label. There. Huh. Got to pick. Probe label. Uh, once you start, I don't know. No. Nah. And that maybe that's why I continue to use SolidWorks. But there we go. So there's there's our answer. Now, is that a good something we should look at? Is it a good mesh? No, not not in particular. It's actually a really bad mesh, but it solved really fast. So that's I got that going for me. Um, 
Again, that level of agreement, if I pick the right spot, 673, or sorry, 637, 637, 615, bad spot. But you can also look at, uh, let's see if we can figure out exactly where this one was taken. Oh, just a little off center. See if I grab, oh, and I already figured out I can't do this. can't do this. Ah! I need to be along that ridge in order to get a good value. Stuck. Anyway, I got good numbers. I like them. Now, that's the first part. That's the first part. I can compare stresses, right? Let's go back to the uh, 3D blackboard. The other thing I can look at and I probably shouldn't do it in the rainbow pen because the rainbow pen is killing, something's killing my processing time. I can look at theta, which is equal to TL over JG. Uh, yeah, okay. <coughs> Torque, 1,000 inch pounds. L, 10 inches, picked it strategically. <clears throat> J is pi over 2. The radius is 1 to the 4th power. It's still 1. And G, oh, oh, 10 E6. That's for aluminum. Now, that is off, in the, remember, in the 4th decimal place. But, come on, that works out really nice. But, still, I haven't taken a break for coffee, so here you go. Oh, yeah, I hit the unpause, but yeah, anyway. So, look at my numbers. 63 e to the negative 3, what are the units? Well, I've got inch pounds here, I've got inches there, that gives me inches squared on the top. This is actually inches to the fourth on the bottom, right? I dropped the R, I dropped the 1 because because 1 squared is 1 to the fourth is 1 to the... But it still has the inches, it still has the units, so I need the inches squared. And then I've got a PSI there, so um, I'm going to change to red. Pounds cancel with pounds. This inch and this inch cancel with two of those, and then I'm left with two inches squared, and this is per square inch. So those cancel there, and I'm left with nothing. No units. What are the actual units? What are we actually dealing with here? Radians. Great, okay, so let's pull up our plot. Pull up our plot and go, okay, uh, what are the radians we're dealing with? How many radians does this deflect? Uh, displacement, um, I, uh, it's telling me the displacement at those points. It's, it's telling me, now I got to remember, my Z is the far end. That's where I applied the torque. So I expect this far end to have zero displacements. Yeah, it's min. That's what was fixed. This is where I've got the maximum displacement. Maximum displacement is going to occur out here on this end. I'm going to have to figure out the probe tool. Although you can see it's 0 0.001696. Boy, that doesn't really compare at all, does it? 0 0.001696. Huh. I might have to do a little math on this and figure this one out. Well, my units are in radians. So how do I figure out the difference or how many radians did this deflect? How many radians did that deflect? Well, the key to that is the radians, right? Oh, wrong button, sorry. This button. The radians, or the angle, is equal to the deflection divided by the radius. Oh, look at that. The other reason for choosing a radius equal to 1 is now theta is equal to the deflection. Now, units are getting mixed up in here, but this is deflection in inches over this in inches, so there's actually divided by an inch, but, but that's okay. It's theta is equal to the deflection. So now my results, oh, wrong one, wrong one. You didn't need to see that. Now my results are making a little less sense because as I go back, I forgot what I was supposed to match up to. Whiteboard says, uh, 0.063. I wonder if I did it right. We're going to have to take a pause and check some calculations, check some numbers. Hold on. 
Okay, so the first problem I got is it's not 63 e negative 3. I, I, uh, what my calculator actually shows is 6.36 e to the negative fourth, and then I moved it the wrong way. If I move it to 63, it becomes e negative 5. What I really probably should have written is 636 micro. Okay. Or, or if I keep going down here, theta is equal to 636 micro. All right, now, with that, added with that, I, see, I go back and I, I'm still not matching up. So I've got something else. I am, uh, that is three times the displacement out at the outside edge. So the first thing I'm going to do is it's a really lousy mesh. I'm going to rerun the mesh. You don't have to watch me remesh that, but I will, you know, actually, I know that it runs a lot slower because I'm adding so many elements. I'm just going to put in a zero there. And so that's going to be a, a big chunk of time. So here's a, here's the time machine. Okay. So here's the fun part. Struggling. I drop back, I think about it a little bit, and I go, you know what? I'm going to go run SolidWorks. So see over there, other computer in the office? I ran SolidWorks. Same answer. So the answer's got to be right. I want to say this answer's got to be right. Something I did in my calculation, or so I'm dropping back and figuring something else out. But these match. The SolidWorks gives me a deflection in the x direction in inches of the maximum is um, 0 0.001690, and that compares to this being 0 0.001695, so five parts out of 1,700. Really good agreement between the two codes. That makes me the odd man out, so I'm, I'm going back to check my calculations and see what I've got there. Yeah, as, oh, as soon as I wrote down the equation, I figured it out. As soon as I wrote down the equation, I figured it out. I hope you guys watching the video are just as flabbergasted by my stupidity as I am. And that is, go back to the whiteboard, TL over JG. And what did I substitute in here? That's the value for E. That is, that's wrong. It's just no excuse. So, what do I got to do? I got to go find G. Well, if I go back to Inventor, here's going to be the um, fun part too. If I go back to Inventor, look at my materials, and I'm going to pull up my material list. I'm going to look at the 6061 after heat treat. I got to pull up the material properties. It's not going to give me G. I, I already know that. Right? It gives me G. Look, it's right there. 0.3751. Huh! Huh. SolidWorks doesn't do that. All right. Now I'm ready to go back to the calculator. So uh, we're going to go back here. Bonk. Theta. Oh, I can't do black. Theta equals TL over JG equals 1,000. Units or inches. Uh, inch pounds. L10. Try to drag a line, drag the whole screen. J was still pi over 2 inches to the fourth. Sorry, that's 10 inches. And G, golly, um, 3.751 E6. 3.751 E6 PSI. Calculator time. Put it in my pocket. Equals 1.698 E negative 3 radians. So now when I go back, pull up the plot, uh, cancel that, cancel that, and look at, cancel that, and just go back to my X displacement. 0.16, um, yeah, okay, so I missed the peak right there. Uh, but they have 1.695. So somewhere there's a peak, which is three parts out of 1,700 off. Yeah, small, small. And because my radius is one, the displacement in the x direction at the peak points where those align is my deflect, is my radial, is my angular deflection. Kind of showed that. Everything matches up. Wow, it took longer than I wanted, but that was a silly mistake of uh, using E instead of using G. But, you know, that's what happens under pressure situations. Yeah. Bummer. 
All right, but the results are the, the results are also what I expect in terms of if I would look at just the magnitude of the displacement, um, just the magnitude of the displacement. On this end where it's fixed, it's zero, and it's zero all the way up. And then because the radius is small, that deflection, even though there's a even though the angle is the same, the deflection is still small. As the radius goes to zero, the deflection goes to zero in the Cartesian coordinate system. Managing the Cartesian, managing coordinate systems, kind of the lesson on scuba tank, because we were working in the uh, R theta system with a scuba tank for radial and tangential stresses. And here we're dealing with, um, really, again, we, we've got our deflection is a, a theta coordinate system. Uh, so it's an R theta problem. And um, it would be nice if we had a better way of getting, getting some of those plots out. But that's where we are. We have to interpret, we have to interpret our results to have it make sense. So hope you're doing well. Don't worry, more to come.